So far, we have discussed Cauchy's Gorsa theorem, Cauchy's integral formula, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives, and its consequences. And of course, we have also seen uh, its uh, uh, usefulness in evaluating contour integrals. Now, in this module, we are going to see uh, some more consequences of these important formulas in the theory of complex valued functions. Now, in the last module, remember, uh, we talked about uh, the properties of the maximum and minimum values of the modulus of a complex valued function. Now, in this uh, uh, module, we will see Cauchy's inequality, which provides a kind of upper bound for the modulus of the derivatives of a complex valued function. And of course, we will also see another important theorem and uh, most importantly, we will see fundamental theorem of algebra in this module. Now, let's begin with this Cauchy's inequality. So, Cauchy's inequality uh, says that if we have an analytic function in a simply connected domain D and this domain D should contain this circle of radius R and center Z0. So, if these conditions are satisfied, furthermore, uh, the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for all points at this circle, then we have the following upper bound for the modulus of the derivatives of this complex valued function, which is, uh, which says that the modulus of nth derivative at point z0 is less than or equal to n factorial m over r raised to power n. Now, uh, this inequality uh, once again is non-trivial uh, in the sense that by just having information about uh, uh, function or the derivative of the function at the points of a circle, we can talk about uh, the upper bound at the center of the circle. Okay, so over here we have just this circle C R Z naught with this description, and under these conditions we can give uh, the upper bound of the derivatives of any number of derivatives. So, here n varies from 1 to up to so on. So, we can talk about uh, the upper bound on the derivatives at point z0 which is the center of the circle. So, that is uh, uh, how this inequality is kind of non-trivial. Okay? Now, let us talk about uh, the proof of this uh, Cauchy's inequality. So, we have uh, this analytic function in the simply connected domain D and uh, once again, there is a, a circle, okay, so this is the domain D, there is a circle which is uh, contained in that uh, domain D and the center, if the center is Z0 and radius is R, then we have the following upper bound on any number of any uh, order derivative at point Z0 and this upper bound is n factorial m over R raised to power n. Okay, so, in other words, we want to find upper bound of this nth derivative at point z0. Okay? Now, let us see uh, how do we proceed. So, first of all, uh, the parametric representation of this circle with center z0 and radius r is z0 plus r e raised to power iota t. Now, why is this representation? So, let us say if we are in uh, this complex plane and this is this domain d, of course, uh, the boundary is uh, disconnected okay? So because the boundary is not included there is a circle with center z0. So, we know that what is the parametric representation of a circle with center 0 0 and radius r. So, this is r e raised to power iota t and uh, when we translate, so when we add to this parametric representation r e raised to power iota t, when we add z0 to it, then we get the parametric representation of this circle with center z0 and radius r. Okay? So, that is why this is the parametric representation and of course, t varies from 0 to 2 pi. Now, condition is given f of z is analytic in the simply connected domain D and the circle is simple closed contour inside this simply connected domain D. Now, if these conditions are satisfied and we also know that point z0 lies inside this circle. So, it is an interior point of this uh, C r z0 circle of radius uh, z0 and uh, center z0 and radius r. So, by this important formula which is Cauchy's integral formula for derivative, we can uh, say that uh, the nth derivative at z0 is equal to n factorial over 2 pi iota and integral contour integral around this circle f of z over z minus z0 raised to power n plus 1. 
okay so this is uh, just application of cauchy's integral formula now we also know that how to evaluate a contour integral we are just following the first definition of the contour integration so here we just uh, write down the limits a to b and then f of z of t and then z prime of t now here f of let me let me call this some other name so let's say h of z so what is h of uh, z in this case so this function is h of z in this case so we will just replace uh, this z with z of t okay so uh, so this becomes z naught plus r e raised to power iota t okay and uh, just replace z with z naught plus r e raised to power iota t in the uh, in the denominator as well so that's what we get and this thing is basically z prime of t okay so this is just uh, uh, definition of uh, uh, contour integral and of course the parameter t varies from 0 to 2 pi now moving on so we are just uh, simplifying this uh, denominator where z naught will be cancelled out with z naught and what do we get r is to power n plus 1 e raised to power iota n plus 1 because there is a power of n plus 1 okay so now we know this uh, important result that we did in our previous discussions that uh, if we have uh, this uh, complex valued function of a real variable then uh, the integral a to b f of t dt so this modulus is less than or equal to uh, integral a to b the modulus of the integrand okay so using this we can talk about uh, the modulus of uh, this nth derivative at point z naught which according to our previous discussion is given here okay so uh, according to this uh, uh, theorem this will be less than or equal to uh, the in same integral but uh, the integral uh, integrand is taken with this modulus okay so the mod of uh, this and the mod of this uh, this portion together with this portion okay so that's what it is written over here okay so uh, now this becomes i e raised to power iota t divided by r raised to power n because this is r raised to power 1 and this is r raised to power n plus 1 so this becomes r raised to power n and uh, this becomes e raised to power iota n plus 1 and e raised to power iota t and iota and uh, now the point is this thing and this thing so they are just one okay so uh, by using uh, the definition of e raised to power iota t we can easily check that this is equal to 1 and of course the mod of iota is also equal to 1 so this thing is totally equal to 1 over r raised to power n okay so that's what we got and we also know that uh, on the point of the circle that we are considering in this contour integral uh, this f of z is less than or equal to m so this is the given condition using that condition this whole integral is less than or equal to m 1 over r is to power n dt okay now uh, moving on so this iota is by mistake over here so moving on so this will be less than or equal to n factorial over 2 pi m over r is to power n okay so in fact uh, there will be equality over here be because we are just evaluating this uh, uh, integral which is a real integral and uh, since uh, this m and 1 over r is to power n are constant so they will be over here and the integral 0 to 2 pi of dt is 2 pi so what do we get at the end so the modulus of uh, uh, the nth derivative at point z naught is less than or equal to n factorial m over r is to power n and that is our cauchy's inequality so that was cauchy's inequality which gives us an upper bound on the nth derivative of uh, if complex valued function at any point z naught but of course there are some certain conditions to apply this cauchy's inequality now our next uh, consequence of uh, cauchy's gorsa theorem cauchy's integral formula at and cauchy's integral formula for derivative is this uh, leoville's theorem okay so it is named after this uh, french mathematician joseph leoville now let's see what is this uh, result and most importantly it's uh, uh, one of the main important consequence which is the fundamental theorem of algebra okay now let's see what is uh, uh, leoville's theorem so if we have an entire function first condition secondly is bounded for all values of z if these two conditions are satisfied of course in the complex plane then f must be constant okay so this is the main consequence of this uh, leoville's theorem if we have an entire function and it is bounded for all values in the complex plane then it must be a constant function now let's uh, uh, talk about uh, the proof of this uh, leoville's theorem 
once again uh, two conditions are given entire function and bounded for all z in the complex plane then this is the consequence that we want to prove now uh, to prove uh, Liouville's theorem we are going to use Cauchy's inequality and uh, we will uh, use the Cauchy's inequality for n is equal to 1 so the idea is very simple we choose a random point in the complex plane and we choose a, a circle of radius r and then uh, this r is a kind of variable we can increase or decrease the value of r okay so r is variable and uh, since uh, d if we take d to be complex plane and this uh, circle uh, is uh, contained in c so it satisfies all the conditions of cauchy's inequality so the function is you know analytic and uh, you know in this simply connected domain d and uh, we have a circle so we can apply this cauchy's inequality and uh, we will see uh, how do we apply that in a precise way so the idea is then we can uh, increase the value of r and then what do we get we will get that the derivative of uh, the function at this point z0 is equal to 0 and since this z0 is arbitrary so that's why it will happen for each and every point in the complex plane and hence uh, the the derivative of the function is zero for all z and hence the function is constant now let's see how to apply this idea since f is bounded so there must exist m such that f of z mod is less than or equal to m for all complex numbers in the complex plane and now applying our idea z0 is an arbitrary point in the complex plane okay and uh, we can apply the cauchy's uh, inequality by choosing this circle radius r r is basically the variable okay so we are not announcing it right now but later on we will see that we can change or increase this radius r not r so uh, for this circle n by taking n is equal to 1 we can apply this cauchy's inequality so which will say that uh, the upper bound on the uh, derivative of the function at point z naught which is the center of this circle is less than or equal to m over r okay so once again this uh, uh, this condition was also required to apply uh, the cauchy's inequality so all the conditions are satisfied so that's why we have the following representation now since r is arbitrary so we can take r to be as large as possible so in other words when r is very very large when r approaches to infinity then this modulus is less than or equal to uh, 0 and if some non-negative quantity is less than or equal to 0 this implies that it has to be 0 and if uh, the modulus of a of uh, this uh, complex number f prime z naught is 0 this implies this complex number is 0 and this z naught is arbitrary point so that's why we can do this uh, procedure for each and every point in the complex plane and hence for each and every point in the complex plane the derivative is 0 and if the derivative of a function at each and every complex number is zero this implies that the function is a constant function so that's the proof of Liouville's theorem now let's talk about the important consequence of uh, Liouville's theorem which is the fundamental theorem of algebra now fundamental theorem of algebra tells us about uh, the number of roots and of course the existence of roots of a polynomial of one variable now this problem is really concerned with the algebra part of mathematics but most interesting part is that there is no pure algebraic proof of this fundamental theorem of algebra now uh, this is known as the fundamental theorem of algebra because uh, uh, initially algebra was the study of zeros of polynomials and of course initially of one variable Okay. so that's why it is known as fundamental theorem of algebra and uh, in recent times in modern times uh, th this theorem is not uh, really used in the modern algebra but still it is named as fundamental theorem of algebra but the understanding and knowing this fundamental theorem of algebra helps us in uh, uh, in finding solutions of many uh, uh, problems in for example algebraic geometry and algebraic number theory and many other uh, problems okay so this is an important uh, theorem and the proof of this theorem is included in the uh, in the course of complex uh, variables because uh, it is going to use it is going to use the Liouville's theorem and uh, that is one way of proving fundamental theorem of algebra so what does uh, this fundamental theorem of algebra says it says that if we have a polynomial of degree n greater than or equal to 1 
then p must have at least one zero. Now uh, there is another important consequence of this fundamental theorem of algebra, which says that uh, if we have a polynomial of degree n greater than or equal to one, then p can be expressed as multiplication of these linear terms, uh, and uh, the number of these linear terms is equal to n. Okay, so it is such an important consequence of fundamental theorem of algebra that some books says that this result is basically fundamental theorem of algebra because it says that if we have a polynomial of degree n in one variable most importantly we are only talking about one variable so then the number of roots counting multiplicity is equal to n which is the degree of uh, that polynomial and uh, this result only holds for the set of complex numbers okay and uh, this result uh, is basically uh, a, a basic thing for saying that uh, the set of complex numbers uh, is algebraically closed so algebraically closed means every polynomial has uh, all the roots in set of complex numbers okay so this is uh, the end of our discussion uh, which uh, in which we have seen some more consequences of uh, Cauchy's theorem, cauchy gorsa theorem, Cauchy's integral uh, theorem and Cauchy's integral theorem for derivatives. And in this uh, module, we have seen what is Cauchy's inequality, what is uh, Liouville's theorem and what is the consequence of this Liouville's theorem, which is the fundamental theorem of algebra.